Medterm presents the remaining half-surgery lecture on hernia. From Bailey and Love's Short Practice of Surgery, 27th edition, Chapter 60. Subscribe to our channel for more videos and click on the bell icon for latest updates. Previously we have discussed the definition, causes, examination, investigations and management of hernias. The inguinal hernia has been discussed in the detail with special regard to surgical anatomy of the inguinal canal and the types of inguinal hernia with their management. In this lecture we will discuss the remaining types of hernia and the various surgical approaches with a special discussion on the mesh. This lecture includes the femoral hernia, para-umbilical hernia, epigastric hernia, incisional hernia and lumbar hernia. Discuss about the femoral hernia. It is less common than inguinal hernia. Easily missed on examination. 50% present as an emergency with high risk of strangulation. Anatomy of femoral canal. This figure shows the anatomical location of the femoral ring below the inguinal ligament and the location of the femoral hernia is also shown. Further, the anatomy of femoral canal. It has a length of 1.3 cm. It has an upper opening called the femoral ring and the contents include loose fatty tissue, lymph nodes and some lymph vessels. We will discuss the boundaries of femoral ring. It has four boundaries. Boundaries of femoral ring. The anterior wall is formed by the inguinal ligament. Posteriorly, there is pectin pubis. Medially, there is lacunar ligament and laterally there is the femoral vein. Walls of femoral hernia. Laterally, femoral vein. Medially, lacunar ligament. Anteriorly, inguinal ligament. Posteriorly, pelvic bone covered by iliopectineal ligament. Discuss the risk factors of femoral hernia. It is more common in females due to the increased size of the femoral canal. It is more common in old age because the femoral defect increases. The suture repair of inguinal hernia is also a risk factor. Difficulties in case of femoral hernia. There is inadequate exposure of femoral area. The femoral hernia rapidly becomes irreducible due to the tight neck. So cough impulse is lost. The femoral hernia can be mistaken for a lymph node. Hernia increases in size, it is reflected superiorly, and becomes difficult to distinguish from medial direct hernia. Summary of the concept. This figure from the textbook shows the close relationships of direct inguinal, indirect inguinal and femoral hernias. It is taken from the surgery book by Bailey and Love. Diagnosis of femoral hernia. Direct inguinal hernia. Lymph node. Saphina varix. Femoral artery aneurysm. So is abscess. Rupture of adductor longus with hematoma. Patients. The investigations are usually not required, however, in case of uncertainty ultrasound and CT scan can be done. We will discuss the surgical approaches for femoral hernia. Low approach Lockwood. Inguinal approach Lothysen. High approach McKevdy. Laparoscopic approach. Approach Lockwood. It is the simplest, can be performed under local anesthesia. It is suitable when there is no risk of bowel resection. Inguinal approach L -O -T -H -E -I -S -S -E -N. An inguinal incision is made, spermatic cord or the round ligament is mobilized, transversalis fascia is opened, femoral hernia lies below this incision. Hernia is reduced. Neck of hernia closed with suture or mesh plugs. Layers are closed. That's the high approach McKevdy. Complex operation. Ideal in emergency situation where risk of bowel strangulation. Regional, general anesthesia is given. Frontal incision in lower abdomen is made. Anterior rectus sheath is incised. Rectus muscle is displaced medially. Femoral hernia is reduced. And the femoral defect is closed with sutures, mesh or plug. Topic approach. For reducible femoral hernias presenting electively. Tap and tap approaches. With the laparoscopic view of femoral hernia. Para umbilical hernia. The risk factors include pregnancy, obesity, liver disease leading to cirrhosis. What is a para umbilical hernia? Usually overweight females. Bulge typically slightly to one side of umbilical depression. Pain due to tissue tension. Symptoms of intermittent bowel obstruction may be present. Treatment. 
Surgery is required due to risk of strangulation. Surgery open. Laparoscopic. Small asymptomatic hernias can be managed conservatively. Open para-umbilical hernia repair. It depends upon the defect size. Can be divided into those less than 1 cm primary repair, darn, figure of 8 suture. Can be up to 2 cm Mayo's repair with double breasting. Can be more than 2 cm. Mesh hernioplasty is done. We'll discuss the anatomical planes for mesh. 1. Onlay, in subcutaneous plane. 2. Sublay, in retromuscular space. Or extra peritoneal space. 3. Within peritoneal cavity, composite mesh. Do laparoscopic para umbilical hernia repair. Three ports placed laterally on abdominal wall. Hernia contents are reduced. Tissue separating mesh placed intraperitoneally centered on the defect. Fixed with staples, tacks, or sutures. Discuss about the epigastric hernia. The hernia comes out through midline rapi. Between xiphoid process and umbilicus. Defect is usually elliptical. Physiology, defect occurs at site where small blood vessels pierce linea alba. Contents, include commonly extra peritoneal fat may contain peritoneal sac. Clinical features, often fit healthy men, between 25 and 40 years usually. Soft midline swelling, may be tender. Cough impulse may or may not be felt. Small hernias, may disappear spontaneously due to fat necrosis. Surgery for symptomatic hernias. We will discuss about the incisional hernia. Arises through a defect in the musculofascial layers of abdominal wall in the region of a postoperative scar. For incisional hernias, the incidence is 10 to 50 percent of laparotomy incisions, 1 to 5 percent of laparoscopic port site incisions. We will discuss the etiology of incisional hernia. 1. Patient factors obesity, malnutrition immunosuppression, chronic cough, cancer, 2, wound factors, wound infection, poor quality tissues, 3, surgical factors, inappropriate suture material, incorrect suture placement, Full features, swelling involving portion of or whole scar, steady increase with time, overlying skin may be atrophic, attacks of partial intestinal obstruction, hernia, the treatment is as follows. Asymptomatic incisional hernias may not require treatment. Repair is needed if symptomatic. Principles of surgery. Repair should cover whole length of previous incision. Minimal tension. Mesh to reduce recurrence. Approach. Open repair. Mayo back quote S repair. High recurrence. Open mesh repair. On layer retromuscular sublay. Laparoscopic repair. Tissue separating mesh placed intraperitoneally. Discuss the lumbar hernia. Most primary lumbar hernia occur through the inferior lumbar triangle of petite. Bounded below by the crest of the ilium, laterally by the external oblique muscle, medially by the latissimus dorsi muscle. This figure shows the normal anatomy of the superior and the inferior lumbar triangles. The sac comes through the superior lumbar triangle, bounded by 12th rib above, medially by the sacrospinalis, laterally by the posterior border of the internal oblique muscle. Very lumbar hernias are very rare. More commonly, lumbar hernias are secondary to renal operations when extensive incisional sacs may be present. Treatment, surgical repair. Discuss the last section of this lecture which includes the principles of hernia management and types of mesh. We will discuss the principles of hernia management. An abdominal wall hernia does not necessarily require repair. What are the observation? Indications for observation, non-operative management, 1. Elderly people, 2. Asymptomatic hernia, 3. Small hernia, 4. Easily reducible, 5. Not causing anxiety. Waiting. For small para-umbilical hernias. Usually contain fat or omentum. Cause few symptoms. Low risk of complications. Watchful waiting has been studied in asymptomatic inguinal hernia. Disadvantage observed. Few patients develop strangulation. We'll discuss the indications for surgery. 1. Symptomatic hernia. 2. For cosmetic reasons. 3. To establish diagnosis when in doubt. 4. When complications are likely. 
5. All cases of femoral hernia. 6. Irreducible hernia. 7. Increasing difficulty in reduction. 8. Increasing size. Regional hernias are major problem. Surgical repair is a complex procedure. Risk of complications. Later recurrence. With wide neck, however, there is low risk of strangulation. Conservative approach can be adopted. In elderly obese patients, wide neck hernias, where risks outweigh the benefits of surgery. We'll discuss the principles of surgical repair of hernia. 1. Reduction of hernia contents. 2. Removal of non-viable tissues. 3. Excision and closure of peritoneal sac. 4. Reapproximation of walls of neck of hernia. 5. Permanent reinforcement of abdominal wall defect with mesh or sutures. Concept of mesh in hernia repair. Mesh is a prosthetic material, either a net or a flat sheet, which is used to strengthen a hernia repair. This table from the textbook shows the characteristics of the mesh. It can be woven, knitted or sheet form, synthetic or biological, mainly synthetic. Light medium or heavyweight, lightweight becoming more popular. Large pore, small pore, large pore causes less fibrosis and pain. Intraperitoneal use or not non-adhesive mesh on one side. Non-absorbable or absorbable, mainly non-absorbable. Uses of mesh. To bridge a defect, mesh fixed over defect is tension-free patch. 2. To plug a defect, plug of mesh pushed into defect. 3. To augment a repair, defect closed with sutures and mesh added for reinforcement. Well-placed mesh with overlap of 2 to 5 cm around all margins of defect. Complications include migration, erosion into adjacent organs, fistula formation, chronic pain, meshoma formation. That's the mesh types. 1. Net MESHS woven or knitted. Fibrous tissue grows in between strands. 2. Flat sheets, not porous, do not allow host tissue ingrowth. Mesh types. 1. Synthetic mesh. 2. Biological mesh. Discuss the synthetic mesh. Synthetic polymers of polypropylene. Polyester. Polytetrafluoroethylene. Non-absorbable. Provoke little tissue reaction. Shows the proline mesh. Propylene mesh is a strong monofilament mesh. No antibacterial properties. Hydrophobic nature impedes bacterial ingrowth. Meshes. Braided filament mesh. Hydrophilic property. Allows infection to take hold. Polytetrafluoroethylene mesh is the form of flat sheets. Do not allow tissue ingrowth. Non adhesive barrier between tissue layers. Mesh include sheets of sterilized, decellularized, non immunogenic connective tissue. Derived from human or animal dermis. Bovine pericardium. Porcine intestinal submucosa. Logical mesh encourage neovascularization and new collagen deposition. Host enzymes break down the biological implant. Replaced with host fibrous tissue. Presence of infection. Some biological meshes rapidly break down and weaken before remodeling can occur. Absorbable meshes. Synthetic mesh. Made from polyglycolic acid fibers. Used in temporary abdominal wall closure. No current role in hernia repair. Two separating meshes designed for intraperitoneal use. One surface sticky and the other one is slippery. Prevents adhesions to bowel. Positioning of the mesh. 1. On lay outside the muscle in subcutaneous space. 2. In lay within the defect. 3. Sublay between fascial planes or immediately extra peritoneally. 4. Intra peritoneally shows the various positions of mesh on lay in lay sub lay intraperitoneal what are the positions of the use of mesh presence of infection if mesh becomes infected appropriate antibiotics the breedment of non-incorporated mesh vacuum assisted dressings if not salvageable mesh needs to be removed higher topic of hernia from surgery book by bailey and love chapter 60 Thank you for watching. Subscribe to our channel for more videos and click on the bell icon for latest updates. Stay tuned for a demo video on hernia examination. Have a nice day.